So today is going to be a relatively uh, quicker video here. Let's make a folder, minimal docker, cd in there. And today we are talking about how you build uh, containers with Go and how you might be uh, doing it ineffectively or inefficiently. You could probably save some memory, some space, and also some money, some cost as well. Uh, so let's run go mod init. Uh, just uh, set up a new new go project here. Let's make just a main.go. Let's jump in there. And I'm just going to set this up to be a very, very simple program. We don't really care about what it is. Um, this, this would be your service or your application, whatever. Um, but the main thing we're talking about really is um, Docker image size and how you can get uh, very compact, very small images uh, with Go. So let's set this up here. Um, I'll zoom in on the text for you there. And we are just going to do a sprint F and D get a new line at the end and we're just going to print on our counter um, at the end we're going to increment our counter and let's say time dot sleep and time dot second times two okay and then uh, print f is what I want all right, so there's just a simple program. It just prints saying sleeps for two seconds and just increments forever. Okay, so the main thing that I want to look at here is a couple different ways of building this. So when you um, when you deploy Go applications, you're taking a binary. Um, you're taking a binary, so you're building a binary here, and uh, you're running that thing. So this this binary here is very, very small in size. Uh, I think we do H here, yep. So this is like 1.9 megabytes. This is a tiny, tiny file. Uh, but what often ends up happening is once you build an image, once you do Docker build, um, you'll see the size just balloons out just because of the base image you choose. So a lot of times like you'll import from, um, you'll say from Golang latest, something like that in your Docker file. And that brings on a ton of unnecessary stuff. Um, so let's let's go ahead and make a couple of Docker files here. We'll say one called small, um, one called big as well. Okay, and let's uh, remove bin. Okay, so binary's gone. Let's jump into the Docker file big. So let's look at it like a common way of uh, doing this. Um, you'd see that. You would see something like um, just add all of the source into here. Um, say slash app. Um, Um, you'd copy all your source in, um, then you would usually run something like go build, um, right, just like we did, say so bin, and then you would, you know, like, like expose your ports, something like that. I don't have any ports to expose, but then you would just run it. Like this. Um, something like that and then you would just docker build t big um, yes so then when you run this um, this is going to pull in all of your source code so all your source code is going to live in that image um, in addition to everything else that we're pulling in from this this image too so this image gonna, is going to include whatever golang whatever that base image has plus every bit of your source um, then it's going to build it and you know you can run it um, and it'll work. So there's that image. Um, but if you do Docker images and take a look here, you can see that image that we have 
is 846 megabytes. So that's almost a gig. We're, we're using almost a gigabyte of uh, storage of memory to run something that's, um, if you remember, was 1.9 megabytes, right? So that's that's huge. And then let's say you have multiple versions of your app, you want to track, you know, previous versions as well. So you're probably pushing um, these up to your your repository somewhere, right? You're probably storing these. Maybe you're using AWS ECR, you know, Elastic Container Registry or ECS to, you know, deploy all your stuff. But over time, you're just going to have gigabytes, gigabytes, hundreds of these, right? So you'd have many versions, right? You'd have hundreds of versions of your app, um, of your service, and that storage, if you're not, if you don't have some kind of policy to clean it up, is going to, you know, just grow over time. And that's, that's money right there. Um, and additionally as well, you don't want to store your source code. Um, like a big reason of using a compiled language like Go, right? This isn't Python. Um, this isn't Python or like JavaScript or things like that where they're interpreted languages. This is a compiled language, right? So we get this, we get this bin, we get this binary out. Um, and that's one of the big benefits. This is the only thing we need to ship and run our Go programs. So uh, let's see. Um, just going to show you a better way of doing it um, that will save you a lot of storage and hopefully help you out with uh, building and shipping your, your Go programs. Um, let's jump in here and let's say from scratch. And all we're going to do is add um, bin and just put it in there. And then we're just going to run it. Okay. Um, that's it. Let's remove Ben. And so basically, um, one thing as well, so uh, Scratch is a Linux-based container. Um, so it's a Linux-based container here, super minimal, uh, basically used to build super minimal or small um, images that, you know, just contain a single binary and just run. Um, yeah, so we have to build before, what do we do? Go build. Um, this builds it you know, so that we can run this on our operating system, or if you're on Windows, you know, this would build like a .exe, and you could run that, but we're trying to build for Linux here. Um, so I'll, I'll put this here in the description just so you can take a look at this. Um, but this is how you specify building for Linux. Basically the main ones you need is just this Go operating system. Go OS um, is Linux, and then you can pretty much build it. There's a couple of other flags that I've added on um, like for Cgo, so I'm not going to run that, but let's ls lh here, and you can see 1.9. Um, if we run this here, build it for Linux and specify, you know, Cgo 0 and a couple of these other flags as well, and we run this again, it drops the size a little bit. Um, so basically, you're saying you don't care about C and Go interrupt, um, enter oper operability. Um, that saves some room there, right? It doesn't need to add. Um, as much stuff into the final binary. But okay, so we built that. And now if you run docker build um, small, let's go ahead and build that. And then we should be able to do docker run small. And you see our same binary is running here just like before. But if we do docker images and show them, um, we can see this latest one we just built, this small one is um, 1.89 megabytes. So it's that's, that's a lot of savings right there. Um, and that'll add up over time, your storage cost, etc. cetera. Uh, that'll save you some hassle and some headache. Um, yeah, and a nice thing as well, this Docker small right here, um, we don't actually put in any of our source code. So the only thing you're shipping out, only thing um, that you're actually, you know, saving into your Docker, uh, your Docker repository is just gonna be that binary. Um, so how, how you do something like this, you know, in your pipelines or your GitHub actions, um, you'd still be, you know, bringing in your source code, but essentially inside of the pipeline itself, you'd be running your, your build command. Um, you'd build the image. So you'd, you know, build the Docker small image and then, um, you, you'd push your, you'd push, um, your image to whatever image repository or image store you're using could be, you know, ECR stuff along those lines, or maybe you're working with Heroku or digital ocean or, um, whatever image store you're using. So from your pipeline, you would push there and then whatever container management like ECS or things like that would basically take that image and run it. 
Um, so what you'd actually be pushing out doesn't even have your source code in it. It's just that tiny uh, minimal binary uh, that that whatever um, you know whatever image uh, manager you're using would basically spin up that image and just run that. So that's um, that's one way of doing it. Another way that I'll show just quickly Dockerfile.stages. We'll make that and let's jump in. First, let me go ahead and cat this one. I'm just going to copy that here. Let's jump into stages, paste that, and really quick, small copy. I'm just going to copy that, and then let's jump back in, paste that. Okay. So another thing you can do as well, if you don't um, want to worry about running you're running this command in your pipeline, you can actually use Docker and use uh, what's called stages to do both. Um, so you can have one of your Docker stages here, pulls from Golang, so you get everything you need to build inside of your container, um, add the whole project, build it, and then build it and then you can set up another stage to actually um, use the binary that you built from your previous stage and then um, actually run it there. So this gives you the best of both worlds. Um, you get to build your source in a container here. You don't have to worry about your local operating system, um, whatever. You get to build your source all in the container and then you also get to set up a new stage um, which is it ends up as a separate image and you get to kind of make that second stage be minimal and compact as well so there's one change we'll need to do here um, because we're building for scratch we basically need to run this same the same command that we were just doing before and then also there's a different way of adding it here but we'll change this to copy um, and then we need from from the first stage uh, we're going to copy from app slash bin just locally, and then we'll just run bin. Okay, so let's docker build stages. And let's run that. All right, so that built our uh, binary, copy it over, and then finally we just export our images. So we can run this one, docker run. Um, stages and we still get the same application running just like we did and if we run docker images um, our stage image here is the same minimal compact one so this I would say is kind of the best of both worlds um, you get to you know pull in from whatever image you want to build from um, kind of not have to worry about having all that stuff locally or in your pipelines maybe you know if your your pipelines don't have everything needed to build Golang um, you don't want to do like a bunch of package installs every time you run a pipeline. Um, just just let Docker worry about that, and you can build within your Docker image here in the first stage, and then you can create your minimal your minimal image there, and actually push that image out to whatever um, image repository you want. So yeah, that's the main thing here. Um, just think about maybe review how you're building your images um, for your application or service and. Uh, remember, you could save a lot of space, a lot of money, um, a lot of storage over time um, by building the smallest container you need. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, yeah, let me know if you'd like me to look into anything um, or make a video about any topics coming up. Thanks.